Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am doing a little makeup tutorial today as you will be able to tell from the title. I always get asked questions on how I do my makeup, what products I use, etc, etc. So we just thought I'd come on and show you me quick day to day makeup tutorial. I have just currently got a little cover. To be honest with you, I have been um, swapping my cup of teas to hot water with lemon and lime, but I was literally just sitting there nearly falling asleep on the couch. I'm having a proper lazy Saturday because I'm actually having a few days off from work and oh, I just thought, you know what, get off your ass, girl. Get off your ass. Cup of tea, two sugars, makeup tutorial. I'm probably going to just wipe the makeup off once I've done it, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, first things first, I have got my hair back off my face. Currently in a roller just because I've had, like, oh, I don't even know what it looks like right now. I blew my hair about three days ago. And it's still a little bit bouncy. So that is just how I keep it in. So I'm just going to keep all this out my face with a little scrunchy green, of course, to match the juicy. Please ignore me. Sip on the tea throughout. I will crap it out as much as I can, but I am drinking this cup. Eh? And also, please ignore the bruises. I had my lips on yesterday, they're still extremely swollen and a little bit bruised, so just ignore that. But again, for anyone who asks, um, I get my lips done by, and my Botox by JMY Aesthetics. Jen, she is the best of the best. And if it was down to it, I probably wouldn't have lips this big because she has told me to dissolve them quite a few times just from like previous practitioners and stuff. But I somehow convince her every time to just. Give me a little something, something else. And to be honest with you, they always look a bit big when I've got new makeup on, but when I've got my makeup on, oh, I wish they'd stay this big, to be honest with you. So, anyway, let's get into it. So, first thing I am going to do is I am going to prime my face and... I don't even know what I've got. No, I don't think I have got it on my face. No, I haven't. So, I'm going to prime my face and I'm going to put a little mask on. So, I have been obsessed with this. Pia got me it for Christmas. I don't really know exactly how you say the name. Lan Laneige Sleeper Mask. Oh, it is literally the dream. I've only had it for a month and I have used so much. I religiously use this every morning and every night now. So I always used to anyway just put a lip mask on while I am doing my makeup just because it's so hard because I'm trying to do this in the viewfinder but I feel like I'm going to have to get a little minute just so I can see what I'm doing. One minute. Okay, a little bit of a change around, but I just needed a minute so I can actually see what I'm doing because otherwise I'm probably going to end up looking like soft sal. Um, so I'll put the sleep mask on and this will just keep my lips hydrated, avoiding foundation lips and making my lip product go on so much nicer at the very end of the process. To be completely honest with you, it doesn't take me longer to do my makeup really usually. So I'm just going to try and like not touch it and stick to what I do. So... Primer, skin food. Now, this is absolutely amazing, but you will see now as I put it on that it is literally like clay. It's so, so thick and it's not for everyone. Um, my skin is quite dry and I always do have spray tans and stuff like that. So, with having tan on my face um, and my skin being dry anyway, I can most of the time get away with using this as a primer. For some people's skin, um, you might be best using the skin food light or just using like an actual primer because some people who have oily skin this might not be perfect for you but anyone in general you should look at the difference already you should have this product because it is just absolutely amazing for me this is the best primer and moisturizer ever i can use this once a day um and not really break out it it doesn't clog my pores too much i feel it's it's fab on my skin because as i say it's dead dry I feel like I should just down this cover. Sorry, quick interval. Now that is out the way. I am absolutely sweating. Oh my god. So, firstly, I'm going to start off with brows once I've primed my face. Now, if I was going to do a makeup look that was a little bit heavier that went day to day, I probably wouldn't have put all of the skin food all over my face straight away. I probably would have just done my eyes first and then primed and all that afterwards. But day to day, I'll just put a little bit of bronzer on my eyes and just have, like, quite a natural look because 
as I always have my eyelashes on. Again, for anyone that's going to ask, I get my eyelashes done by Siobhan. Lash naps in Abbey College Studio, so I will put a little name, Instagram name, on the page, on the screen. Oh, I can't get my words out. On the screen, just for anyone that wants to know. She is amazing. Look how fabulous and fluffy they are. I haven't brushed them today, not going to lie. So... What I do for my eyebrows, usually they are well more see-through than this, but I have actually tinted them the other day. So, what I have been using for the past few months, well, probably since about August, is the NYX Professional Micro Brow Pencil in shade black because I have black hair. And then I have been using a pair's soap and a setting spray. So, I will literally just get the soap, get the setting spray, give it a little spray and then rub the brush into the soup Ooh. now make sure you do this before you put foundation on otherwise you're gonna end up with big creamy horrible thick nasty brows so all i will do is literally push the soup right through my brows and just brushy them all off the difference already oh my god And obviously, if you need to go in with more product, then you do that. If you see me looking in that direction, it's because that's where the mirror is. But, yeah, it's just impossible to do it in the viewfinder. And I don't want to be looking away the whole time. But I'd rather you actually see what I'm doing rather than me, like, holding the mirror right there. So, brush up the brows. And then what I will do once I brush them off is just sort of give them a little pat down. So they're flat to my face and that really just helps set them in and then I can brush them again. Now, you're all going to probably brush them over a million times throughout the brow process. But all I'm going to do now is just go in and fill in the, any little gaps that I have in my eyebrows and just make them appear, appear a little tiny bit thicker. <laughs> So once my brows are done, I'm going to go in with foundation and just go straight into skin. Foundation wise, not going to lie, I do have about 100 different foundations. So I'm just going to go with a natural daytime sort of foundation that I'd use typically for like work or just a normal day. Um, and I always mix a few. Jess McKenna, who I go to to get my makeup done, always used to tell me to mix your foundations because they will always stay longer. So this one I will never not put on first. If you like glowy skin, then you need the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. I know everyone's probably already got it, but um, this is in shade 3. I do also have shade 4, but it just, again, depends how brown I am. I'm not that brown at the minute because my mum hasn't given me a spray tan this week. Imagine! and she's been in terrible being with the soup so i just don't make it tan so if i'm a bit uh, patchy or whatever that's why so i'm just gonna go in and with a beauty blender and just pop this all on my face and just blend it in now if you're looking for something that is literally just day to day a nice glowy like sort of tinted moisturizer you could definitely use this on its own but it probably won't last all day long. You'd still have to, like, set it. But in the summer, oh, it's the dream. You can just see, it just gives you an extra glow to your skin. And it's a really nice shade for me. It just gives me a little bit of extra colour. So once I have put that on, I am now going to go in with one of my favourite foundations, to be honest, at the minute. And I'm going to mix it with something else. Just looking for it. Okay, so... um. I am going to use the Ordinary Coverage Foundation. Now, this is the high coverage foundation. It's only five pounds. It's absolutely amazing. And for something that is day-to-day, -day, like, I don't like to wear my NARS every single day because it's quite thick and it's obviously a little bit more expensive. So, it's just better to save that for, like, occasions when I will wear this for work and it will still last me all day. So, this is the Ordinary Coverage Foundation and... This is in shade 20N. So I'm going to pop a tiny bit of that up oh, and put it directly onto my face. I'm just going to pop a tiny little bit of this on and a little bit on my neck too. And then I'm going to go in with, oh, I'm running out, but I need some more. Um, This is NARS 
natural radiance longwear foundation and this is in shades ooh will it focus punjab now i always used to use either barcelona or oh, what was the shade that i used to use we're just not even gonna ask around with that um barcelona or what was the other one oh, i can't remember can't remember but this is just a perfect 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 color for me now um especially if you're someone with like a little bit of a yellowy undertone it's perfect like as you can see that just blends into my neck and me and me tan lovely so they're the two colors that i like to mix and the nars just gives me like the nice orangey sort of warmer tone that i need and then the ordinary one just gives me like a nice flat natural um skin like color that's gonna ask i get my eyelashes done by siobhan lash naps in abby cartlidge studio so i will put a little name instagram name on the page on the screen for oh, i can't get my words out on the screen just for anyone that wants to know she is amazing look how fabulous and fluffy they are i haven't brushed them today not gonna lie i have been using for the past few months well probably since about august is the mix professional micro brow pencil in shade black because i have black hair and then i have been using a pears soap and a setting spray so i will literally just get the soap get the setting spray give it a little spray and then rub the brush into the soap Ooh. now make sure you do this before you put foundation on otherwise you're gonna end up with big creamy horrible thick nasty brows so all i will do is literally push the soap right through my brows and just brushy them all off the difference already oh my god and obviously if you need to go in with more product then you do that if you see me looking in that direction it's because that's where the mirror is but yeah, it's just impossible to do it in the viewfinder and I don't want to be looking away the whole time but I'd rather you actually see what I'm doing rather than me like holding it out right there. But push up the brows and then what I will do once I push them off is just sort of give them a little pat down so they're flat to my face and that really just helps set them in and then I can brush them again. Now, you're all going to probably brush them over a million times throughout the brow process but all i'm going to do now is just go in and fill in the any little gaps that i have in my eyebrows and just make them appear, appear a little tiny bit thicker so foundation wise not gonna lie i do have about 100 different foundations so i'm just gonna go with a natural daytime sort of foundation that I'd use typically for like work or just a normal day. Um, and I always mix a few. Jess McKenna, who I go to to get my makeup done, always used to tell me to mix your foundations because they will always stay longer. So this one I will never not put on first. If you like glowy skin, then you need the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. I know everyone's probably already got it but um this is in shade three i do also have shade four but it just again depends how brown i am i'm not that brown at the minute because my mum hasn't given me a spray tan this week imagine my son she's been in terrible being with the tooth so i just don't mean tan so if i'm a bit uh, patchy or whatever that's why so i'm just gonna go in and with a beauty blender and just pop this all on my face and just blend it in now if you're looking for something that is literally just day to day a nice glowy like sort of tinted moisturizer you could definitely use this on its own but it probably won't last all day long you'd still have to like set it but in the summer oh it's the dream you can just see it just gives you an extra glow to your skin and it's a really nice shade for me it just gives me a little bit of extra color so once i have put that on 
I am now going to go in with one of my favourite foundations, to be honest, at the minute. And I'm going to mix it with something else. Just looking for it. Okay, so, um, I am going to use the Ordinary Coverage Foundation. Now, this is the high coverage foundation. It's only £5. It's absolutely amazing. And for something that is day-to-day, -day, like, I don't like to wear my NARS every single day because it's quite thick and... It's obviously a little bit more expensive, so it's just better to save that for, like, occasions when I will wear this for work and it will still last me all day. So this is the Ordinary Coverage Foundation. This is in shade 20N. So I'm going to pop a tiny bit of that on, oh, and put it directly onto my face. I'm just going to pop a tiny little bit of this on. And a little bit on my neck too. And then I'm going to go in with... Oh, I'm running out, but I need some more. Um, This is NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. And this is in shade... Ooh, will it focus? Punjab. Now, I always used to use either Barcelona or... Oh, what was the shade that I used to use? Okay. We're just not even going to ask around with that. Um, Barcelona or... What was the other one? Oh, I can't remember. Can't remember. But this is just a perfect, perfect, perfect colour for me now. Um, especially if you're someone with like a little bit of a yellowy undertone. It's perfect. Like as you can see, that just blends into my neck and me and me tan lovely. So they're the two colours that I like to mix. And the NARS just gives me like the nice orangey sort of warmer tone that I need and then the ordinary one just gives me like a nice flat natural um skin like colour so I'm just gonna go in again with the beauty blender and I'm gonna pop this all over my face <laughs> I don't know how it looks in the camera, but in the mirror it looks sound, so to judge. Trust the process, guys. Concealer, I am going to use the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. This is in shade 05. I always lived and dreamed and swore by the NARS Creamy Concealer. But you know what, guys? Honestly, I used to use this in school. And I seen it in the Tesco a few weeks ago, and I literally just thought, oh my god, remember that? Unpopular opinion anyway, but I just think this absolutely shits on the nose. Shits. Sorry, but it does. It lasts me so much longer. It's so much more easier to go on. You get so much more product. I just, I just, well, prefer it. So I'm just going to pat that into my smile lines. Pat that into my smile lines there. Um, this is one little part of my face that I literally can't wear, and it's my smile line. So I'm just going to get rid of them as much as I can by concealing them and then once this is sat for like a little minute I do like to leave it for a little tiny minute just to sit um, and then I'll dab it in just feel like it goes on a little bit easier once it's like hardens a tiny little bit onto your skin so I'll just leave that for a minute and then I will go in and I will just dab it under my eye and I will take this part not outwards but I'll take it into this bit and then down the sides of my nose just to already like start off the contouring process of the nose and then I'll sort of just drag it across under the eye a tiny bit and then go across the face just to make a little bit of like a wing without making a wing and then just dab and blend that in and then same on the other side sorry if I keep putting this mirror by the camera I just really need to see what I'm doing the light is that bright because I've decided to do this at about 8 o'clock at night. Um, I'm having to use like my ring light and it's I, it's that bright that I literally cannot see into the camera, into the viewfinder. So, again, just dabbing that down the side of the nose and across the eyes. I am going to set this straight away under the eye. I don't know whether this is like, again, what you're meant to do. Just getting that foundation off. Um, what you're meant to do, but this is always like sort of work for me. I feel like if I don't set sort of near enough straight away, my under eyes will really crease. To set, I am going to use, of course, the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. Um, there isn't really another powder like it on the market, in my opinion. The Huda Beauty one is meant to be really good, but I haven't actually tried that out yet. 
So I'm going to use this. So what I'm going to do is, again, using the Beauty Blender, I dab the Beauty Blender straight into the product and then I take the Beauty Blender and I just pop any excess off onto my hands. When you put your Beauty Blender into the powder, if you can see, it gets a little bit, like, bumpy where the where like the holes are in the powder so if you push it onto your hand it just creates a really like flat um product so then when you flat product i don't know if that was the word but when you go in on your skin now and i do i just like to press and roll under the eye i think i've seen makeup by Ariel, 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 whatever, doing this once. And just press and roll under the skin and it just gives you a really flat, flawless look. Rather than sometimes if you just go in straight from the powder onto your face, you, like, because it's bumpy on the beauty blender, it goes onto your face bumpy, if that makes sense. So it's just a little crease I always get under my eyes. So I'm just going to make sure that that is covered. And then I'm just going to press and roll over where I have just concealed and on my smile land too and then everywhere else i will leave the powder for a little bit so next for cream contour i am going to go in and use the bobby brown contour stick in shade warm almond again absolute classic I'm sure everyone's here to be um i will use this again alternatively this one i love the this is literally ran off this one um the eraser in caramel by maybelline that's another amazing product and then the tarte or the tarte dupe that you can get from the aldi um is also an amazing um concealer for cream contour so i'm just gonna go in with my booster blender and i'm just dabbing that on top of the cheekbone and sort of just going up towards where i have piled before now i have got a really big fod so i really do like to contour my fods um and then i love blush gorgeous gorgeous girls always over blush i just like to always go above the cheekbone so it gives you sort of a facelift um i see a lot of people going underneath the cheekbone i just feel like it drags your face down so much it's just not flattering at all so staying above the cheekbone with the cream contour and then i would just also go around my forehead um, with the beauty blender and just really bronze up all down the side into where my eyes and all around my forehead just get super bronzed and then with then an extra I do just sort of like dab it on my chin and then just here around where the corner of the jawline is just underneath the jaw for me again that works there's loads of videos where people are going into depth about how to contour your jaw and stuff which i have figured out like that is the best for me it also just gives me a little bit of a shadow and just makes my jawline look a little bit more snatched so next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take the bobby brown again pop my beauty blender on the end and i am just gonna sorry i need to get another mirror for this um and i'm just going to contour my nose now i haven't got a big nose i wouldn't say but obviously it's just nice to contour it um just slightly so i'm just going to start at the bottom and work my way right up into the center of up the center of my nose and just sort of tap 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 and it's already given a little bit of a contour vibe and then i'll sort of blend it into where my eyebrow goes into my eye there into that little bone whatever that might be called and just again contour down and I just feel like that gives me a little bit more of like a snatched look and then I'll take this part of the beauty blender and I'll just again just tap up and just neaten that up a little tiny bit on the ends of my nose and up to that I might lever these like a little tiny bit so you can see a little bit more there is that a little bit better I feel like that's a tiny bit better it's not that heavy to be honest anyway i mean some some may disagree but so next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna powder the rest of my face now i seen a tiktok of meg ryan doing this trick and i've been using it and it works so much more so what i'm gonna do is just powder my face with the setting spray this is actually from aldi this is a makeup setting spray from aldi absolutely amazing anyone who goes to the aldi and knows about the liqueur and the dupes that they do 
if you know you know like honestly some of the stuff is absolutely amazing oh, this is an amazing setting spray so i'm just gonna pop that on my face give it a little waft i just hit myself in the face get that little waft and then i'm gonna go back in with the lord of mercy i translucent powder and i am gonna powder everywhere else on my face that i like to powder so Again, taking it, popping it onto my hand first. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go underneath the cheekbone. I used to do this so, 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 like, snatch, but, like, I don't really anymore. I just sort of go underneath where I've contoured and then a tiny bit into the contour just to keep it nice and smooth and blended. Oh. And then again, same on the other side. I just sort of go underneath and then a little bit onto where I'm going. Over my chin around my lips and then just this sort of like area and then sometimes again if i know i'm gonna be like going to work or it's gonna be like a little bit of a long day i'll just go a little bit over my forehead as well and just have a tiny little bit of this powder because it just makes everything stay and sit so much longer and so much nicer and gives you a really airbrushed finish by the way, has anyone who uses this used the glow version? Because I have got it still sat in the drawer and I don't know whether I'm using it wrong, but oh my God, it was... Uh, oh, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. So let me know if you have, if you are someone who's used that because I may be using it wrong, but as I say, it's absolutely... I just hated it. So next, I am going to go in with Hula Caramel. Now, I am, the, I am a really pale person. And I have black hair, so I need to warm my skin up with tan and warm it up with makeup as much as humanly possible. I know a lot of people like to use the normal hula, but I just personally think that the normal hula absolutely washes me out to death. It looks great on my skin. So hula caramel is the best thing that's ever been created. And if you know, you know these last years, like absolute years. So I'm going to go in with this bronzer brush. I actually don't know what it's called because the bronzer has rubbed off. I've had it that long, but it's my favourite brush ever for bronzer. It's slightly angled and just nice and fluffy so i'm just gonna get a little bit of this going on and i'm just gonna lightly go over where i have contoured before and just set the bronzer and just give it a little bit more of a defined look um if there's anything that i've learned from working alongside makeup artists over the years it's that a little bit goes a long way and start light and build up as you go so that is what i always try and do just start really light and just do small circular motions until i am happy with the coverage sorry i feel like i'm a proper nightmare because i'm looking away but i just want to make sure obviously i'm doing it how i usually would do it um and then down my nose and then again just there into my eyebrows a little bit on my chin and then here and then i will also just give me neck and my chest a little bit of a bronze as well just to make sure that it's all the same color they are love these juicy um bronzers but the straps i have literally got no shoulders and the straps are just absolutely horrendous so when debenhams were shutting down i went in and bought fucking all kinds of shite that i did not need and in this cute little palette um it's got hula light and normal hula now if i'm just giving myself a little bit of something something on the eyes i won't want to use sometimes i'll use the same bronzer but then i found found that like my whole face was sort of one color so i go in with the normal hula on my eyes just because it's a little bit of like a cooler tone it feels a little bit more like an eyeshadow rather than using the same bronzer that i've got everywhere else on my face so i'll just close my eyes make sure there's nothing jazzy going on and i just literally create a little bit of like a shadow on my eye and then i just sort of lightly if you can see it's not huge like you can't really tell too much well I'll just lightly spread that out and give myself a little bit of a wing. And I just feel like it just separates my eyes from the rest of my face. Again, very, very slight. You can't really tell. But it just gives me a little something. And it just gives me a little bit of, like, a wing. And just curls down the area. Because there's nothing worse when, like, you've done all your makeup and then your eyes are just pitch white. Again... I don't know where this brush is from, but oh my god, you know when you just have them brushes that like you just use forever? Like look how fluffy it is. It's literally five years deep in fucking pool. Like, I fucking 
I landed on an Everton, but I just love it. I couldn't use another brush. Next, I am going to go in with blush. Now, I have got loads of different liquid blushes, but honestly, on a day to day basis, I don't usually use a liquid blush. It just depends if, like, it's in the summer, I'll use a liquid blush a lot more when I'm going for, like, a lighter look, but I just love a powder. So, using a big fluffy brush, I use about three different blushes. I do. But I love blush, I've always loved blush. You know the way everyone says, like, oh my god, can't believe I wasn't on the blush trend. And now I'm only just using blush. Oh, I was always using blush. I have been using blush. Since I was literally nine, my mum has been like, a little bit of blush, a little bit of mascara. Goes a long way. Do you know what, girls? It does. Now it's a lot of blushing and full set rushing. So this is a Laura Mercier palette that I got probably last year i don't know if they still do it but it's absolutely amazing it was 36 pounds and every single one of them individually in there would have been 31 pounds each to buy i think so absolute bargain it's got two highlighters three highlighters two blushes and a bronzer but to be honest i do only use the blush out of this palette i don't think i've even that one's cracked well i don't think i've even touched the others maybe the bronzer when like if i'm giving myself an extra little shimmer because it's nice and cool but i am going to go in with these two blushes so this one is a matte one and it is called Rose, and then this one's Guava. So I'll just mix them a little bit, and I will start with me where I have contoured, and I will just go over that with these because it's not too highlighted. It just rosies me up a little tiny bit, and then I'll use something else on the apples of my cheeks. But I just would rather look like rosy than um, than like bronzed. Or a bit of both, you know. Just lightly going over that. Keeping it off the apples in my cheeks. Like I say, I'm going to use something else on the apples in my cheeks. Then I will, again, just slightly go down the centre of my nose. Gives you a little bit of a sun-kissed look all year round. And then on my forehead too, I just like to bang a little bit of blush there. It just warms, warms your whole face off and just gives you a little bit of sun. Don't know why I always go in with the chin. Don't know if that's beneficial. Will the makeup artist please let me know if I'm just like making my chin look longer or whatever. But I just love going in with the chin. At the end, I'm like that. With the chin. Um, so once I've done them, I will go in and again use the most mainstream product. But guys, I have actually been using these for years. I feel like everyone's on them now. But either way, either way. Now I'm going to go in on the apples in my cheeks and I'm going to use NARS Orgasm. The powder version. I've had this probably for about two years and it's still got loads left in. So I do recommend. Um I don't absolutely adore the the liquid version when you're wearing a lot of powders on your face. I like it in the summer again, like I say. So using the big fluffy brush again, I am just gonna smile and I am just gonna dab that NARS orgasm all over the apples of my cheeks. I absolutely adore this product. Now the reason I don't use the other ones there it's because they're a little bit too thick this one is a little bit more sheer so it's nice to just use on the apples and it doesn't look too in your face well again opinions but to me it's not too in your face and it just gives me a nice sheen where i want it um rather than like a big face of glow like there's just no need next i'm gonna go in with highlighter now i swap and change between two highlighters sometimes i will mix them um so either the iconic drops or the hourglass highlighter again it just depends what i'm going for today i'm going to use the iconic just to give you like the full glow um and sometimes i will apply it with my finger if i'm going like really really minimal or sometimes i will just go in with a flat foundation brush now this one i actually have got a name for is moda m09 probably my sisters that have robbed god knows i've had this brush for ages again so i'm just gonna literally tap the tiny like you can't even you can't even see it like it's actually the tiniest way and i'm gonna go on the very tip of my nose and then i'm gonna go up here on the higher part of my nose and i'm just gonna dab that in with the flat foundation brush and dab it into the end and then blend it in even more with my finger and it's just gonna give me a little bit of like a lift on my nose then i am gonna go in and i am gonna again where you'll see the natural highlight I'm just going to dab that on and then I'm just going to start pushing that into my skin. Just 
gives you a gorgeous sheen. To remove everyone does this, but this is where, like, when I have no makeup on whatsoever, this part naturally is highlighted on my face, so I always do there as well. But right here, between the peak of my brow and up towards my forehead, I also just dab a little tiny bit there. I just feel like, I don't know, I don't know why I do that. As I say, it's naturally highlighted usually when I have no makeup on. So I just done it one day and now I just always do it. Just gives me a little bit of a lift, I feel like. Then again, teeny tiny bit on the cuticle brow and a little bit on my chin. Love the chin, do I? So face wise that is basically it day to day that is all i will do i feel fresh i feel glowy i feel blushed so i'm just gonna go back in and set that again with a bit of satin spray now at this point i would look and if there's anything that i felt like i needed a little bit more of i'd probably go in but i feel like we're all right right now okay a little bit of a closer look just oh just nice and glowy in the right places and mattified in the right places still um ooh. so now i'm gonna go in with lips so before i put any product on i'm gonna wipe the lip mask off that i have got on you poor little bruised lips bless them do you know what though i know i'm a sick eye but i love a little bruise you just feel fresh and like i only had them done when was it yesterday I mean, I had them done yesterday, I wasn't even meant to get them done, I just went with my mates as well. Um, they were getting a top up of the Botox, and I was just like, do you know what, fire, inject me. Um, oh yeah, I've actually got a spoolie, I'm going to brush my eyebrows. So, I mean, my eyelashes, give them a little brush, fluff them out. So yeah, I just, honestly, I love the next day, like that hard, plump, stretched, shiny feeling oh, not promoting filler guys not promoting filler obviously if you want it get it if you don't don't i fucking love it wouldn't live without it to be that honest with just so for lips i am using charlotte tilbury and this is pillow talk this is one that i again use all the time um and i also i wanted to use my other one to be honest but i don't know where it is it's like a rimmel one and it, it's quite similar to this but it's a little bit browner but anyway i can't find it it must be in one of my bags so i'm gonna go in and use this and i'm gonna show you my little lip gloss hack for not getting that horrible you know like sticky white line that you get around your lips and your mouth's a bit dry i don't really know why i get it it's fucking mad but this is my little hack to not get in that and i swear to god sometimes i will do my makeup at nine o'clock in the morning and it will be eight o'clock at night and i'll still be in work and i will still have this little tacky just I'll show you this. So, I'm going to go in and line my lips now. Some may overline. I personally don't really need to overline anymore. I might slightly just to, like, make sure my shape is completely symmetrical on both sides. But, especially right now, I'm not going to overline because they're fucking huge. Just going to go in and go right around the line of my lip. Now... I'm not a big lover of lipstick, so we'll just use the lip liner as a sort of lipstick, and I'll just fill in like halfway on both sides. Oh my god, the difference! Thank you. So See what I mean now that the fill's in. Huge. Huge. Love it though. Love it. The bigger the better. Juicy booze. Um I actually don't get my lips on all the time as well. That's why I'm literally not asked about bitching for it because I absolutely like oh, when I do get them done, I just shut up I'll stop talking about it now. Anyway, um Next lip gloss. So I am going to use this one today, which is Opal Magic by Charlotte Tilbury. I usually do use this. This is my everyday gloss. It is Kiko Milano. These are the best lip glosses in the world, but I don't know what shade it is because it's worn off. So I'm going to use this one. So use now what I'm using. So um, I'm just going to go in with this. Also, it's got a nice little tip on it. So my tip is to only lip gloss. Oh, 
only put your gloss where I'm applying it now, not all over your lips because you won't get that horrible tacky feeling and then your, your lips will still look completely gloss. So I'll always put it on the cupid as well and just a quarter or like halfway down on each side. And then I will go in and do it at the bottom here. Again, not all the way. Just leaving the corners out and then just right there in the middle. And I will just stop start in a little tiny bit. Tell me my lips don't look completely glossed. Because they do. They look completely glossed. But they're not. And they're still nice and dry all in here. So I don't get that tacky feeling. They stay on all day. Honestly, it's like I, th I don't know where I've seen it. it. Must have been on TikTok or something. But it is one of the best hacks I've ever had in my life. You still look that glossy. It's just amazing. So that is my day to day makeup routine. Me go to makeup routine. Me go to makeup products. Um, and then I will just. I'm just gonna take my hair out and take my roll out. I've had this, like I say, my hair's been blown for like three days, but I, um, I've i just been trying to make it last, so I've just been wearing a roller when I'm in the house and then just sort of letting it fall into like a nice little, it's getting quite greasy now, to be honest with you, but nice little side part, or oh, that's a bit too over to the side. Ooh, it's getting a little bit greasy. Do you know what? I might, might give it a little spritz with the hard dry shampoo. But yeah, guys, that is my makeup routine day to day. If anyone's got any more questions, I've, hopefully I've explained everything as much as I possibly can. If anyone's got any more questions, please let me know. Or if anyone's got any suggestions for me to use, please let me know because I'm always updating my products apart from like a few of my holy grails that I don't think will ever change. Absolutely love filming this. I love doing makeup. Absolutely love it. I like... I don't wear it every single day, but I do wear it quite a lot because I just feel so much more glam, so much more confident and just ready for the day. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anything else that you would like to say or would like to see um, or want me to do, then please let me know. I have got a few hair videos coming, but I'm going to wash my hair first and do it on fresh hair. But little hair hack, if you want your hair to look fresh for days after you blow dry, keep it rolling in. It'll give you the volume and then you can still just deal with it. I'll show you the ends of my hair. The ends of my hair have just still got like a little bit of a fluff to them. So it just keeps it looking nice and fresh. And yeah, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've made it to the end, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all soon.